So, all right, why I did this, why I put together this course, um, it, it occurred to me recently that running idle breaking well is hard. And that's actually deceptive because it actually looks easy because it, it is really just a series of questions. You get these questions answered properly and, um, and, and it'll work. But the tricky bit is answering it properly. It's like I said on that page I put up, it's like the difference between simple and easy. It's simple to ask these questions, but it's not always easy to get all the right answers. So that's, uh, that's why I'm, I'm creating this course and we're in for it together. And, you know. um, so now for today's call, some of today is going to be review for some of the folks who are on the call. I think as we get moving through these calls, they're going to get a lot more kind of uh, surprising new stuff. But since we have people who are at a variety of exposure to this work on the call, I am going to spend some time today just going over it step by step, what this process is, and kind of walking through the script for it. Now, I know for some of you, like I said, that's going to be review. But I always like to just kind of nod along with the music as, as it plays, and we'll, we'll get through that. Um, today we're going to cover an overview of the questions in the script, uh, getting their big one. Sort of the step one is that question, what do they really want on the deepest level? That's what we're going to dig into today. Look at sort of the problems and solutions that show up at that level. Uh, a couple of tools for the process as a whole to help you uh, work through it. I'm going to talk about working alone or working with one other person and just ways to practice because I know that not everybody has uh, a group they can practice this in. Uh, but luckily, this, this works well one on one or even individually. And we'll talk about my suggested quote unquote homework uh, between this and the next session. So, uh, is that clear? Any, any questions or comments so far? Clear. Right. Clear. Thank you. Clear. I'm not trying to harass you guys with that. It is really, if it's not clear, I want to know. Okay, so I want to uh, just talk a little bit at first about the, the, the different rules of the road that you have with idle breaking versus other types of work. Now, probably pretty much everybody on this call has seen um, what's various called carpet work or shadow work or process work, which is where we put out role players and kind of turn the crank emotionally and see what happens. Um, there are some real differences between this work and that work that if you don't know those can kind of trip you up in, in how you put this together, so I want to go over them. In carpet work, what you're looking to do is you're really trying to capture a moment in time that creates an emotional response in a person. So you put, and this is not what we're doing in idle breaking, so in carpet work, you put out um, role players say, all right, there's this situation or circumstance you're in. I'm going home for the holidays and seeing my family. And every time I'm alone with my dad, I flip out or whatever it is. <laughs> so what you do is you, you have different role players. You have different people play the different voices that are speaking to you internally and in your opinion externally during that moment in time. Uh, and then you say, all right, so, so what's happening is this part is saying you're not, uh, you're not good enough, and this part is saying I don't care about you, and this part is saying, wow, I really hurt, and this part is saying I wish it could be different, and uh, all these things are happening at once. That's, that's a, a slice of time, and when you reveal that to the participant, they will become upset, basically. They'll either get angry or sad. Now, in idle breaking work, even though we're still using role players, we're doing it differently. Um, Instead of doing a, a moment in time or a slice of time, what we're actually doing is a progression through time. We're, uh, we're setting up uh, what happens first, what happens second, what happens third, and so on. So we first set up them, and uh, we'll be going over this stuff in more detail, but just to get a sense, first, them, they want something. That's the first step. Then when they go for that, they get something else. In time, that's the second step. That's what happens next. After they get something else, their heart breaks in a certain way and they start believing in a certain type of fate. That's the next step in time. And after they believe that certain kind of a fate, then they, then they start turning towards a dark higher power who would set that fate up. That's the next step in time. So um, there's kind of a, a different feel to it than when you're just setting up a moment in time. And another big difference is that 
on carpet work, the, the parts are all talking to each other. They're, I always say when I train people in that, you want them to make you statements to each other. In idle breaking work, they're actually more making I statements. They're saying, I want this. Or, you know, it might say, well, what I really want is I want to feel like I'm on a team with my wife. Right? So I'll have a part that says, I'm on a team with my wife. Great. When you go for that, what do you hit instead? Um, and they'll, and it, they'll, it'll be the circumstance the person hits, like my wife always makes me late. So the role player will actually say, well, my wife always makes me late. Or your wife always makes you late. It's not so much a dialogue as it is just what happens next. And then the next will be, how, you know, how does your heart break? Well, I start to feel like I have to yell. So put out the guy who, or, the, or the gal who says, oh, I feel like I have to yell. It's, they're basically I statements. Um, so knowing that will help you account for some sort of the weird feeling that can be on, uh, during idle breaking, that it feels different. Um, I also feel like this is what, what I call third level work. Um, and just very briefly, kind of the first level work I, I see as uh, before we do any type of personal work, we kind of we want what we want when we want it and we're willing to debase ourselves and others to get it. That's our, our goal is to get what we want, doesn't matter how. First level of sort of personal development. The way I see things happening is then someone will have an experience like an initiatory weekend where they actually become engaged with their emotions. And on that level, we want to express our emotions congruently and authentically. So if I'm sad, I want to be sad. If I'm angry, I want to be angry. If I'm scared, I want to be scared. It's very important to express our emotions congruently. And carpet work is a lot about that, really expressing, your, really expressing yourself. But in idle breaking, we more see uh, those, uh, those, anything that isn't joy, basically, anger, sadness, fear, shame, as um, indicators that there are places in you that haven't yet fully felt God's love. And so rather than saying our goal is to fully express those emotions, our goal is actually to use those emotions as guides to get us back to or to expand our experience of divine love. So I like to say you can't, you can't skip the second part. You can't say, well, you know, I'm going to go from not knowing anything about my emotions to this. I think it really makes sense to, you have to spend some time knowing what your emotions are and being congruent and authentic with them. But when you reach the point where you're able to start doing this work, we just see those things differently. They're not there to express, they're there to guide us. Another big difference is in carpet work, there's not a whole lot of, we, we, we take what the person says at face value a lot. And what I've really seen with idle breaking is we don't really take their word for things all that much. We actually dig in to is what they're saying really true. And that makes it more facilitator heavy in some ways. One of the upsides of idle breaking is if you ask all the idle breaking questions and don't dig in, nothing bad's going to happen. They're just not going to be very emotionally connected to the process. But you're not going to get into some weird cul-de-sac that you can't get out of, which can happen in carpet work. Um, but uh, uh, with idle breaking, we dig in more, and that's really what you're going to learn here. These five questions are easy. You know, are, are, are easy. Getting the answers is hard, and that's where we're going to dig in. I think some of the other advantages of idle breaking versus carpet work is idle breaking is easier to do one-on-one -on -one or just with yourself because it progresses through time rather than asking you to hold, it asks you to hold less in your head at once. Uh, anytime we try and, uh, um, the more we ask someone to hold in their imagination simultaneously, the harder it is to go deep. Uh, this asks them to hold less stuff than if you were trying to hold all the parts on a carpet in your head at once. Right. A lot, of the, a lot of your job as a facilitator is helping people clarify what's actually going on for them. I like to say that each step of this should either reveal something a person didn't know about themselves, that they say, yes, that's true. Wow, I wasn't really, you put that so great. You know, it's in, in a way like in carpet work, we're, um, we're just trying to get out sort of their current state. In idle breaking, we're trying to actually help them see I think more crystal clear. We're looking for those moments they say, yes, that's exactly what's going on for me. And um, that's part of our job is to sort that out. <laughs>